In the 1996 movie Twister, storm chasers try to deploy instruments in the path of a tornado. In a scene near the end of the movie, a few chasers get too close and are picked up and thrown by the tornado and presumably killed. Last Friday, for the first time, this became reality when four chasers died in a tornado near El Reno, about 20 miles west of Oklahoma City. Probably most well known, both TV viewers and scientists, was Tim Samaras, whose team was featured for three seasons on the Discovery Channel series Storm Chasers. Scientifically, Samaras was best known for designing instruments to observe conditions inside tornadoes. He would deploy his probes along the expected path, much like the chasers in the movie Twister. One of his conical shaped sensors measured a record drop of 100 millibars of pressure in a tornado in South Dakota in 2003, a loss of 10% of the air's weight, and similar measurements in other tornadoes led to two scientific papers. Another of his probes, equipped with cameras, captured some of the first video from inside a tornado in Iowa in 2004. Last Friday's El Reno tornado had a maximum width of 2.6 miles, one of the largest ever observed or surveyed, and has been rated EF5, with winds measured by a mobile research radar of 296 miles per hour. The tornado mangled and twisted Samaris's storm-chasing truck almost beyond recognition. Other chasers survived close calls. The Weather Channel's SUV was rolled and tossed 200 yards, injuring three people inside, while self-proclaimed extreme chaser Reed Timmer's armor-plated vehicle had its hood ripped off. Atmospheric conditions last Friday were ripe for producing tornadic thunderstorms in central Oklahoma, but it wasn't that good for chasing, partly because the nastiest storms were expected to be near Oklahoma City around rush hour, so traffic would be an issue. Some storm chasers tweeted they were keeping their distance, not surprising given that congestion is now arguably the biggest hazard of chasing, even in rural areas, where roads near storms are often packed with a mix of veteran chasers, inexperienced thrill seekers, and those looking for made for TV drama. On this Doppler velocity radar image from Friday, the white circle marks the tornado's center, the red dots show locations of chasers with GPS, and many don't have GPS and thus aren't shown here. Given the size of the tornado, too many of those dots are just too close. That proximity made the tornado hard to see clearly, especially because it was wrapped in rain at times. The violent tornado had many twisters called suction vortices rotating around its core, increasing the overall wind speeds. And adding to the already dangerous situation, the tornado jogged unpredictably to the north, just as it was widening and strengthening. Just two weeks ago, in a feature on Mount Everest, I mentioned that the mountain is getting overcrowded in May, increasingly with inexperienced climbers. That congestion in very harsh conditions makes mountaineering even more dangerous. Last Friday may very well have been a sort of Everest moment for storm chasing. Fred is back next with the extended forecast.